Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Malibu. We have beaten the hot sun today. It's going to be brutal out there later, but right now it's the perfect morning for a ride. And this is going to be really interesting because although I've ridden about, I don't know, 25 different motorcycles in my career, not a lot, but more than just a handful, uh, I've never ridden a hog, like a proper Harley Davidson hog, old school style. So last week I had the Pan America, the brand new adventure touring bike from Harley, very advanced, total departure from what they've done. Next week I have the Livewire, the electric Harley. Those cannot be my only two Harley experiences. So I said, send me something from the old school. This is new school, old school. This is the Fat Bob 114, and it's a subset of the Softail series. What Softail means, if you've never actually considered the term, is that it looks like a hardtail with no rear suspension, but they hide the rear suspension. So it is soft, it has rear suspension, but it looks like a hardtail. This bike also has an adjustable preload for that suspension, which I have taken the convenience of setting to fat. The engine is an air-cooled Milwaukee 8 V-Twin, 114 cubic inches. That translates uh, into 1,868 cc's. By displacement, the largest motorcycle engine I have ever ridden. It's old school, right? Air-cooled, push rod, but it's got four valves per cylinder. It makes 83 horsepower uh, at 5,500 RPM and 110 pound-feet of torque at 3,500 RPM. Very low revving motorcycle, almost like a diesel or an old big block. It's got a six-speed gearbox, which mates to the traditional Harley-Davidson belt drive. It has front and rear disc brakes, 16-inch wheels with 80 and 70 series tires. The tires are super meaty on these wheels. I really like the look. It reminds me of the bike from Terminator 2. It's awesome. Uh, and this thing weighs 676 pounds, which is really heavy for a bike that's not that big. The Pan America, the big adventure touring bike, was 132 pounds lighter than this motorcycle. So even though you've got a low 28 inch seat height, even though you've got everything really down low for a good low center of gravity, this is a heavy, dense bike. The bike starts at around 18,000 and can be optioned up to just a hair under 20. It's pretty simple. No advanced tech, no special features, not much that's really new to discover. Let's discover what's old then. Folks, today's video is brought to you by my favorite grooming tool of all time, the Brio Beardscape and its new cousin, the Blackout Beardscape in full murder regalia. This thing rules. It's got a crazy long battery life with like three hours of trimming power. I literally charge my Beardscape about once a year. Plus, it's got the battery display, the power display, it's got adjustable length, uh, blades so you can get real tight you can get a little looser with it and if you want to go crazy you can pop this main blade right off as I learn I should clean the inside of it and use the zero blade that's for trimming it's for edging it's for getting that hard cut it's not for your bolas I would not use it on your bolas. Whether you're shaving your beard, your head, or your body, the Beardscape lets you do all of it at home quickly, efficiently, and with tons of battery power to spare. Hit the link in the description to get the Beardscape either in the regular color or the new blackout color with the zero blade accessory and never pay for a barber again. What jumps right out at you immediately, enormous torque. I mean, instant throttle response. And when I say it's like a diesel, I don't mean like a turbo diesel. It's got a smooth, it's more like a big block where you just touch the throttle and the bike wants to jump out from underneath you. It's all right now, torque. Uh, getting used to a bike that revs so low is Kind of interesting. I mean, it's so blah, 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 thumpy, right? Everything is different about this bike from what I'm used to. The, the seating position where I'm low and my feet are out in front of me, that's a new thing for me. 
um, a bike that's completely made of metal and weighs, you know, double what some of the bikes that I ride. Uh, that's new. But I do have to say, they brought this thing to my house, unloaded it from the truck. I looked at it and immediately went, oh yes, that is cool. I mean, it looks cool. The, the blacked out shape, the really cool Harley Davidson writing on the wheels. And it's, you know, like a big diesel truck or something, or a, an old seven liter muscle car, you know, some old Camaro or something. It feels so fast, it shoves you back. But if you really put it up against a proper sports car, it's not really. Uh, folks who ride a lot of Harleys uh, will tell you that this thing, quote, is more agile than it has any right to be. I can't prove or disprove that theory. Oops. But, oh, I was already in top gear. I was going for another gear because I'm at like 2,500 RPM. <laughs> um, I can't necessarily disprove that theory, but I can say that on this part of the road, the sweeper's part, it's not miserable. The ride is pretty good. I mean, and actually the ride is pretty soft. It's, it's a nice cruiser. I have virtually no desire to go over five or six tenths in this bike, although I see some pretty hardcore folks out here sometimes mobbing. Um, it definitely feels, you know, solid. This whole bike is made of metal. There's less plastic on this than really any motorcycle I've, I've ridden before, uh, and it feels it. It feels like you're riding a fully iron hog. Um, I don't think it's the heaviest motorcycle I've ever ridden, but for its size, it's definitely heavy. Um, having said that, it isn't terrible to ride in the city. Uh, the, the bars are not that wide, uh, the foot pegs are not that wide, so you actually can do some lane splitting in the city um, and, with, and, and get your way through traffic if you did want to use it as sort of a mixed-use urban bike. Uh, if the goal was commuting, this would not be my, my bike of choice. Just too big, too heavy, um, and too much blah, 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 all the time, you know? Um, finding neutral is a little funky on this thing. I mean, I don't know, it's only got 700 miles on it, and so that could be an indicator, but I'm gonna come to this stop sign right here and just, just try to find neutral and see how long it takes me. Down to first. No, no, no. It just keeps, there, okay. I, I don't know why, I just like can't make my foot. It just, it just doesn't want to find neutral on the first try. I have a real, I've had a hard time with it this whole week. The clutch and gearbox give you a very solid feel when you engage them. The clutch feel is really good through the lever, although the lever itself is both far away from my hand um, and very heavy. So if, I had, if you had small hands, this would be a tough bike to ride. Uh, not just because of the clutch lever, but actually, I mean, if you've never ridden a Harley, and this was news to me, Harley has their blinkers spread out amongst the handlebars. The right blinker is on the right bar and the left one's on the left bar. Uh, maybe I'm missing something, maybe there's something I don't know about that system, but I can't hit the right blinker without somehow making an adjustment to the throttle. The blinker button is really far from the throttle, the throttle is really sensitive, uh, you've got this enormous torque motor with like instant response, and so it's actually kind of a challenge to do something as simple as indicate a right turn without also affecting your throttle. And that's kind of funky. Uh, the Pan America has a more, let's try to find neutral again. Pan America has a more traditional, nope, 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 nope. I mean, nope. Like, you gotta understand guys, there. I'm tapping that thing as gently as I can possibly tap it. I, I just don't, don't really get why that's like that. It's weird. 
obviously being big and heavy uh, agility is going to be at the bottom of this bike's skill set which should be very interesting for this section of road I'm about to take you on it's extremely tight uh, very funky not very fast even in a very fast car but we're gonna see how this thing does when you really start to go back and forth back and forth back and forth this bike it's like a it's like an a ready-made pro touring thing it's like something from another era but built somewhat to the standards of today I mean it, it's got no technology other than ABS and uh, keyless start but you know it, it gives you that very old-school impression uh, while not being something where you have to worry about vintage stuff breaking There's so much torque, you like you never have to downshift to go up a hill. Um, it's it's a really interesting thing to ride. I mean, you really have to change your entire riding style for it. So here's this. This is going to be super funky right here. Really bizarre section of road. The trick is going to be to not use too much throttle, actually, because we can. We're going to be going like 1500 RPM. Yeah, we're 1800 RPM in second gear just glub glubbing ourselves through this section here so if you're not in a hurry this is a cool bike I have to I mean look I, I've enjoyed it way more than I thought I did I went into this week thinking there was absolutely no way I would like this motorcycle at all I just I just didn't think I'd like this style of bike the cruiser even though I look like I should um, I didn't know if I'd like the non upright uh, or the the feet forward riding position look at this this tightness so as I'm balancing my front and rear brakes here the rear the rear brake is not particularly effective and I noticed that when I'm lane splitting in traffic as well the rear brake compared to the front brake it feels just really soft um, it's not a, not as much confidence there so I'm leaning on the front brake more than I would in some other motorcycles where I've really had good rear brakes so look at this I just cruised out that was second gear 1200 rpm I mean I've never really been in a bike where you're just cruising along at 1200 rpm I'm actually going to go to first here. I mean, it's like when you hit the next gear, it reminds me of a race car sequential box. You get that same gunk, this metal gunk, gunk, gunk when you change gear. It's incredibly satisfying, but it's offset by the unsatisfying nature of never being able to find neutral properly. Oh, see that? I just went for the blinker and I hit and I, and I adjusted the throttle. At least it has automatic blinker canceling. If you lean it down into a corner, the direction your blinker is on, it knows that you've done that and it cancels the blinker for you. I wouldn't care about auto canceling if the blinkers weren't so stupid. Let's hope they could abandon that soon. That's not, it's just not good. Back to some sort of medium speed sweepers here. Cruising in third gear. Like I was saying, I did not expect to like this bike. But the fact is, it's actually incredibly charming. Um, I don't think I would want this motorcycle as an only motorcycle. Uh, if I could only have one bike, I'd probably want a bike with a little more versatility, uh, a little more agility, maybe some more features. Um, but as part of a five or six motorcycle collection, uh, because if you, you know, not that these things are cheap, but compared to sports cars, you know, you could have five or six bikes for the price of one, one really nice sports car. So it's not unheard of that you might have multiple bikes if i had a collection of multiple bikes a hundred percent a hundred percent 
would I have something like this as part of a collection. This provides me a sensation uh, wall riding and an experience wall riding that is incredibly visceral and mechanical. I can literally feel every pulse of every, uh, every cylinder fire. Um, it's very, you know, metallic, right? It's, it, it feels sort of like a they don't build them like they used to kind of vibe. And it's probably not that fast on paper, but it does feel like it's boogies. You lay into the throttle and that, that torque sends you. I mean, you gotta hang on. There's been a couple of times where I goosed the, little, the throttle a little more than I wanted. It felt like the bike was gonna just jump out from right underneath me. And that, that's not a sensation I'm used to. Almost back at home base here. I'm starting to feel it, starting to go a little quicker, starting to understand how to make it move. The bike, this bike, you know, to go from more uh, traditional motorcycles, well, this is a more traditional motorcycle, to go from a modern style motorcycle to this, it, it does require an adjustment in your riding style. And, um, and it's cool. I have to admit it, I feel cool on it. Um, it looks cool when I park it. Um, and although uh, it's, it doesn't handle or go stop and turn as fast as other stuff I've ridden, objectively or subjectively, um, I think it's actually like super, super fun. And so like I said, if you're gonna go be a one mic, a one bike person, if I can ever find neutral to shut it off, there you go. If you're gonna be a one bike person, not a lot of versatility with this bike, um, but if you're gonna have a bike collection, uh, should something like this Fat Bob absolutely be part of it? Oh yeah, it's fun. So thank you for watching uh, my motorcycle videos. Please share them, please keep watching so I have an incentive to keep making them, and uh, I'll see you later, bye. And remember, always fight your tickets. Use code TST10 on the Off The Record app available in the Android and iOS store or go to offtherecord.com slash TST.